thanking Joshua for organizing this and um for inviting me as well. Um, the pleasure is all mine. I'm super glad to be part of this. Can you hear me, please? Joshua, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Sorry. All right, awesome. Um, to say that I feel honored to be part of this would be an understatement. Um, thank you very much for inviting me, guys. Um, let me just try to share my screen and let me know when you can see my screen as well. Okay. 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 Just take a minute long. Okay. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes, it's up. All right. Um. Okay. All right. So let me just make this a slideshow. Yeah. All right. So. Um, today I'm going to be talking about exploring visual tools for machine learning. And um, my name is Salim Mulola. I'm a Gold Microsoft Learn Students Ambassador and also um, a GitHub Campus expert at the University of Lagos. Um, so um, if I go, let me just talk a bit more about myself. Um, I am a technical writer. I write on everything between machine learning artificial intelligence and um, cloud computing. I try to approach technical writing as a storytelling experience because I believe stories stick. I could tell you something and um, I could tell you a fact and I'm willing to build in a couple of days you might forget about the facts, but then with stories it sticks and I tend to remember them for a longer time, right? So I tend to, I try to um, approach technical writing as a storytelling experience. Um, I also identify as an AI engineer. Um, I build AI solutions with Python. Yeah, mainly with Python. Yeah, and um, um, TV time, Azure, Microsoft Azure, certified. Yeah, certified. Yeah, that's it. All right, so um, let's just get to the nitty gritty. What is machine learning? Uh, machine learning is a technique that uses mathematics and statistics to create a model that predicts the that predicts unknown values. Now, um. I have two images here, BB and Lantern. Now, um, imagine, and this is this goes back to the storytelling. So let's call the baby there. Let's call it. Let's assume that's me when I was younger. So let's call that baby Salim, and that's a lantern. How many of us here? Um, Joshua, I reckon that you're familiar with the lantern, right? Yeah, and how it works. Yes, of course. Okay, awesome. And um, you'd agree with me that the transparent glass, sometimes not glass, but like the transparent part of it. Where the fire glows inside is usually really, really hot, especially after using it for a very long time. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So um imagine this child. Now the child is currently holding a toy. Um perhaps the child thought the lantern was also a toy, and the child goes on and holds the lantern by the glass um part of it. Obviously, the child being um a living thing, he responds similarly. That has irritability. And then um obviously most I'm willing to bet my last money that the child will give out a loud cry and probably take about 10, 20 minutes to get the child to calm down. That's even after trying to ensure that there's no bond at the child's hand because obviously the child's um palm can be compared to perhaps my palm or someone way older in terms of how mature it might be. I don't know if that's the right word, but like that's the idea. Um so obviously the child then it feels the pain and that's the result. Now, a week later, if that child sees that same lantern, we all agree with me that that child will probably not touch the lantern. Or let's say it does, and then it feels the same pain and then it cries again. The child time, the child will probably not touch it, right? And so what happens there is machine learning at, the, like, at a very, very high level. It's not different from machine learning. What has happened is that the child has learned from experience. So now the child doesn't, what the child has done is that okay, anytime I see silver, um, anything silver that has perhaps a glow inside and something transparent, um, perhaps maybe you place it in a certain part of the house, right? The child will know, okay, this thing is hot, this is bad. And perhaps the toy, maybe also put the toy in a certain place of the house, 
and then he knows that okay when I press this thing, this thing comes out with like perhaps I know I think toys these days they have made such that when you press them, perhaps you can come out with like a um, nausea rhymes. I'm not very familiar with nausea rhymes, but I reckon I remember twinkle 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 little stars, maybe something of the sorts, and then the child then goes ahead and do that. So the child basically registers the features of each of them, the toy and the lantern. And based off of those toy, it knows that okay, this one comes with a pleasurable um experience in terms of the toy. I mean, enjoy with the toy. And the other one comes with a sad experience, one that leads to him or her crying for hours. So based on this analogy, that's exactly how machine learning works. So every other, the whole technique, mathematics and statistics, it's no different from what's happening down here. Okay. Um, so there are two types of machine learning and there are two general approaches to machine learning. Um, also, I'll try to share this slides with, um, with you, Joshua. Perhaps Ali, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, uh, um, I think your, um, your slide is a bit static. I don't know if you're actually moving your slides. Oh, I moved to the next one already. Oh, he's Are still showing, cover. he's still showing us the cover slide. With a bit wow, static. are you serious? Okay, let me okay. That. yeah, we can see it now. I stopped sharing already. Let me return that. Sorry. And it's fine. Okay. Oh, wow. My entire screen. Let's do this. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, it's off. So this was my previous slide when I was talking about um the baby and the analogy. Oh, I'm really, oh, wow, that has a lot of context now. So this is where I was yeah. when I was talking about the baby yeah. and the lantern, okay? So now I'm now talking about types of machine learning. So um, with the child instance now, what we've been able to see is that the child can classify if something comes with pleasure or it comes with a sad experience, okay? So like there are two major types of machine learning, two, types of, two major categories of machine learning or approaches of machine learning. We have the supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Now, supervised learning is then further um, divided into regression or classification. Now, when that child sees something, the child is making a prediction. When he sees a silver object and he tells himself, oh, that one is going to come, that's the one with the fire and that will burn me. Then the child is predicting, he's still not sure because he hasn't touched it yet, okay? So, you see the similar manner, that's also how machine learning models work. They predict, right? So the child is only predicting that that is this or that is that, right? So in terms of supervised learning, yeah, we have two types, and then they both predict two, type of, two types of things. With regression, you predict a continuous value. If I were to build a model such that I was predicting the prices of an house in a particular region, perhaps if the house is a two-bedroom flat, if there's constant water supply, if it's in Lekki, I mean, it's going to be different from the price if it was in Ajegunle, all due respect to both areas. Those are areas in Lagos for context, okay? Um, and basically features like that will determine the price of the um, house. However, with classification here, yeah, you're trying to put a label on something, okay? I'm trying to say, um, for instance, the child model, does this thing based on the shape of this thing, does it come with a pleasurable, um, feeling or it comes with the feeling of ox and basically the features are going to use is perhaps okay i'm going to have features that tell you things like that does it have a glue if it has a glue then perhaps it's a lantern if it doesn't have a glue let's say it's um it's pressable it's not um the structure is not adding then it's probably a toy okay if it has a face it's probably a toy now on the other hand we have unsupervised learning and unsupervised learning the major thing is clustering a big use case of clustering was during the COVID-19 outbreak, if perhaps I got data sets that the longitude and latitude of people, and then I was able to create a model that can tell me each certain people have been in perhaps five, I don't know, let's say, I reckon that was six feet, if they've been six feet, six feet apart. So based on that, I can tell that, okay, since these people have been, I can then have a clustering algorithm that creates a cluster of these people, okay, this one has been in contact with that one, and you can, I created one, I don't know if I would demo it, I can demo it somewhere down the line. But I created one such that you could just put in someone's name, say Amaka, and it tells you Amaka has been in contact with Ebuka, Salim, John, and Hassan. Like, that's 
I mean, that tells like how much you can do with machine learning. But that right there is an unsupervised machine learning model. Now, the major difference between unsupervised machine learning models and supervised machine learning models is that unsupervised machine learning models exist such that they do not have labels. So I don't know, for instance, now the child, if I have to train the child, the child knows that that thing has a, ple has a pleasurable um, feeling attached to it, or a feeling of what attached to it. And because of that, like, Basically, there's a uh, model called now. There's a output. The child knows what's happening. But they will also provide learning, like the name implies. You don't know what is coming. Like, you don't know the output, to be honest, okay? You just don't know the output. And um, that's, like, with the clustering um, algorithm, for instance, there's no, I mean, you know the longitude and latitude, but then there's no, quote-unquote, Y column or target label that tells you, okay, well, it becomes a pleasurable or non pleasurable um, sense because by virtue of the nature of the models, it doesn't, of the data sets that use the clustering algorithm, that is not very applicable to it. It's as simple as that, okay? Um, moving on to the next slide. Now, the major thing we'll be talking about today is Azure Machine Learning Studio, okay? And Azure Machine Learning Studio is a web portal. So it's like a GUI, it's a user interface for machine learning solutions in Azure. It includes a wide range of features that helps data scientists prepare data, you train your data, train your model, you publish your predictive services, and you monitor the usage. Um, Azure Machine Learning includes automated ML. Now, auto ML allows you to just, you give your model your data. I can give your model your data, it should predict for you. It's as simple as that. And this capability automatically tries to, tries multiple pre-processing techniques and model training algorithms in parallel. Then, it then gives you the best one. So this is one of the, and this is me telling you that I feel like you all should try to explore. I think I don't know this boys If you're going to take anything away from it, it should be that um, you should try to explore the amazing things you can do with, um, the amazing things you can do with Microsoft's Azure in terms of AI and even beyond AI, okay? Right. So um, this is what the Azure Machine Learning Studio looks like. Is what the uh, we're going to have a demo session afterwards. So this is basically what it looks like, and we're going to walk through this. And then um, this is what the ML auto ML process also looks like. We're going to learn more about this as we go on. And um, finally, let's talk about the auto ML um, process. So you can think of the steps in an in the machine learning process as first of all, you get your data sets. You need to identify the features and labels in the data sets. You pre-process or you clean the transform and um, the data as needed. Now, data cleaning as a machine, so on in the machine learning ecosystem, I'm not sure I'm a machine learning engineer, but I can tell you first on the data cleaning can be one of the most gruesome or grilling process in uh, the machine learning pipeline or machine learning ecosystem. Because most times in production, you don't, you most often than not, you hardly have clean data. And because of that, you spend so much time, let's say you're working on the model, spend 70 80 percent of your time just cleaning the data and then with auto ml that's not your concern right thereafter you want to train the model so training the model involves just placing the model into two groups a training set and a validation set okay um then you train it on the training set such that so the perfect analogy for training set and test set is when the master comes to class and um you give the kids What's it called now? You come with examples. Let's say you want to work on quadratic equations, and then they come with examples, and they tell you the answers to those examples. And then they tell you, okay, now I've given you those examples. Though. Go and solve these quadratic equations based on the way I did this one. Okay. Now that you've been trained on what you've been trained on earlier, that's the training sets. Okay. Now the validation set is when they now tell you to go and work on your own. Now you've worked on your own. When you now check the back answer to mark what you've done, that's right there. That's you validating the model. That's you. And because you've been able to, because you can check the back answer to know the actual answer, then you can then go to the next one, which is evaluating your performance. With your back answer, by back answer, I mean the answer to the exercises actually at the end of this textbook, right? With your back answer, you can always see, oh, I got this right, I got this wrong, and you can evaluate your performance on how much you know the concepts. In a similar part, in a similar in a similar sense, you can get your ML models 
So you can evaluate your annual model performance. So no, it did well on this one. After you've then done that, you can then deploy a predictive service. So um, up next, we're going to be having a demo. At this point, let me know if you have any questions, everyone. Okay. Um, no, you can go on. No question. All right then. Um, let's start with this link. Okay. Uh, okay. Give me a second. Let me do this. Okay. So here we go. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, so basically, um, okay, give me a second, please. All right, awesome. So, um, in this, based on what's given here, I'm going to follow this all the way through. Um, it's a resource off of Microsoft Len, and um, as a Microsoft Descent Ambassador, I recognize it's only right that I go through with this. So the first step, I'm literally going to like walk through this step by step, like everything they're doing, we're going to do it. And it's going to be like really, I try to make it as interactive as possible. So the first step is I will sign into the student portal. So I'll do that here. And, um, let's wait for the I think it takes a while. Let's send it. Okay, I think we're not doing now. Ah, sorry about that. Okay, so now the next thing you want to do is select create a new resource and create session machine learning. Okay, so come here. And then it's Salim, access. yeah, I think your screen is only showing us um, these steps. I've turned, I've gone to the next step already. So he's only showing us, to... not showing us I'm where you're assigned. Okay, hold on. Let me stop sharing and start sharing back. Hopefully that works. Thanks for drawing my attention to that. Okay, let me know when you can see my screen. Yeah, we can. All right. And now you can see the steps. Yes. Uh, and now you can see my portal. Sure. All right, awesome. So um, now I'm searching for machine learning as the steps asked me to. Um, I think what would be great is if I shared these steps with everyone um, on the chat box. Um, I'll also send it to you personally, Joshua. So anyone that's watching the um, recording can have access to the link. Definitely. Okay, I can done that now. I right, back here. So the first step is to search for machine learning and create a new Azure machine learning resource. So um, let's search for machine learning. Okay, so we see here we're trying to get Azure machine learning, and um. Does this say we create? Yeah, it says um yeah, create a new machine, Azure machine learning resource. And then we're going to do that. So we're going to try to create a new resource. Okay. And then we'll give it a while. What about I try to create? Yeah, that's right. And create. I think we have a question. Okay. Hold on. All right, Alaje, can you go on with your question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Is it anything? Uh, for now, I don't have any question. Oh, I will ask. Uh, All right. Uh, um. So. Uh, um. So basically, now, what does it say? It says you should um go to your Azure subscription. My Azure subscription I've selected already. 
um, my resource group. You can create a new one, and then you can just um, go with one, one some resource group you're using before. The concept of resource group is so that if perhaps after this I create, I'm going to create, I think in the next um, next weekend, I'm going to have another class of this book to come. And then perhaps we're going to have um, create another resource for whatever, um, I'm not sure of the AI topic, but like whatever the topic is about with Azure, I'm going to create a new resource. And then when you create that new resource, you want to make sure if you are trying to, like, if you want to group all your resources together, I mean, that's what literally what it says, it's a resource group. So you can make sure all your resource groups are like everything that's similar or for the same purpose, uh, not similar, not for the same purpose, but basically everything that's like related. So let's say I wanted a resource group for every resource that I use for this bootcamp, such that I can take an action on them that will affect everything. Let's say at the end of the bootcamp, I want to delete all the resources I use for this bootcamp, and I just delete the resource group. So that's the whole concept of resource group. Um, so I think my most active one is, let me just scroll down. A random, so I have a couple of random ones there. And um, the name. So now you want to make sure the name is unique for your workspace. So let's call this Salim, and let's add this as what's today's date? Today is 14. Okay, so Sal Salim 14, right? I don't think I know she has Salim 14. That's the way I wrote it. Now your region, you want to pick a region really close to where you are. So it turns out I'm in Lagos, Nigeria. And um, um, I wasn't really good at geography, but then I reckon that South Africa should be close by, right? Now the next thing is picking a storage account. What well, they say, note the default storage account that will be created for your workspace. So just note it down. So what I'm going to do is, um, can I copy that? Is there a way I can copy that? Okay, so we're just gonna ask like, yeah. You know what? I'll take a screenshot. If that would help. Let's try to move it down. Or well, not the application inside. Um, let me take another one. That would be really nice. I mean, if I'm going to use it somewhere down the line, that would be really nice to use to copy and paste. But I mean, we do, I don't believe I'm going to use it at the end. But then, um, next thing, for the container registry, you want to make it none. One, you automatically created for the first time we deploy. So, what do we have? None. Okay, now you want to review and create. And um, you can still see my screen, right, Joshua? Yeah, your screen is still visible. All right. So this will take a little yeah. while. You can, you can, you can see also. Okay, now that that's done, you can then create the width. Okay, so it says um uh, right then. So deployment is in process is in progress. So now wait for the workers we created it may take a few minutes, then go to your deployed resource. So let's wait and let's be sure that it's been created. So it's still in process, so all we can just do is wait. I think in a couple of minutes it should be done. It should be done. Okay, at this point, if you have any questions, I think now would be a great time as well. Since we're just waiting for the, um, for you to uh, complete the deployment. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, I don't know, maybe um, the organizers of this uh, program can create an, an account and um, subscribe on the account and give us an access to his each and every one and access to the same account so that we can use it to know familiarize ourselves with the machine learning as a well portal Okay, yeah, that would have been a very good idea. So um, we are actually seeing possibilities of working on getting um, Azure Pass for people, but then it's 
quite difficult to come by. So it's actually something that we have considered, of which possibly if we are going to have another cohort like this, we'll prepare properly so that we can get access. I think just one account, like uh, one single account, everybody uses it. Yes, um, I just security may not allow you to do that. So that's just uh, one of the reasons. I, I think um, that I can make some rules to guide it. Like, there should be a specific kind from social time to social time. And um, if you want to use it, you ask, so ask for security um, and all that. I think from my own mind, I think that might work. I don't know. All right, no problem. Keep it on that. All right, so um, the resources, um, it's been completely um, deployed. All right, so um, next thing is, we are asked to launch the studio or perhaps you can open a new browser. So I think I'll open a new browser. And what you want to do is you want to sign in into your exact account. And also, I don't know if I could add to like the question you asked. I really think you can explore the, I feel like you should probably have talked about this, but you can explore the um, Azure for Students. Um, I think that'll give you like, I don't know, $100 to build a source, like up for the learning phase and all that. That's just what I think. I right, said so next thing you want to do is navigate to the um, launch studio <clears throat> and sign into the, the same account. So you sign into your Azure machine learning studio using the same Microsoft account. Earlier, what we signed into was the, um, the portal, right? So, um, okay. So now we see that we've signed in because you see that mine has signed in automatically because I used, I probably used this recently. Now in Azure machine learning studio, you should see your newly created workspace. If it's not the case, select the Azure directory. Now, can I see my workspace? Um, I don't think I can see my workspace. I don't know. Can you see my workspace? Let's see if we can see my workspace. Oh yeah, turns out we can actually see my workspace. Um, okay, yeah. Um, and that's the end. Now, in Azure Machine Learning Studio, click the icon. Blah blah. blah that looks like TV stock or TV lines or stock. TV, that's like stack of TV lines at the top left to view the previous page. Blah, 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 blah. You can use these pages in the left hand to manage the resource level. Now, on the compute page, so let's compute clusters tab. Now, let's go all the way here. So, the access will come here. Okay. Okay, compute. And um, can we find compute here? I can't find compute. Let me confirm what they said all over again. So now on this at the left hand side of the interface, you can use the speed in the left hand to add the resource in your workspace. Select compute. So I think let's click on the on the workspace. I think that solves this. I think it's not because okay, I think I might have been it. Is it? Yeah, there's compute here now. Right. Um got it. So what we have to do is now compute. Um we've clicked on compute. And um, select so compute compute clusters tab. Um, how has experience been? It's been it's been really nice. Let's give it a nine. Okay, and then okay. Now what you want to do next is um, we have to create a new cluster. It says here, select compute clusters tab and add a new compute cluster. Okay, let's see. Are we doing the right thing? Azure R, choose some selections. Oh, work on the bits. All oh, workspaces. That probably is this probably is what I have to do. So we're creating a new compute instance. Let's try to see this. Um, we we'll know if we're doing the right thing now. So the location, the virtual machines here. Do we have location here? The type to so CPU, GPU. Uh, oh, then sorry, just give me a second. The compute type, virtual machine size, so tier and size. Okay, okay, I think I reckon that we're doing the right thing. So let's name it Salim 14 again. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Um, I haven't done that. Um, what the dedicated? Yeah. Let's be oh, then Let me confirm what they're writing. Give me a second, please. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Offline. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so your icon links to your left. Now, in select icon, in the middle, it links to your left, right? Um, the various pages will help you maximize the size of the screen. You can use this page in the left to handle the resource in your workspace. Select so compute under manage. So now, is this compute under manage? Yeah, it is compute under manage. Um, okay, now we're not seeing. A compute cluster, but we're seeing crazy compute instance. So I like to think the um, it's the same. It's no different from that, right? So let's just work with that. So let's have a name that cannot be shared. And um, okay, let's work with that first. Let's have Salim fourteen, right? And um, we leave this as CPU. <clears throat> and then um, for the size, we please the standard DS eleven V two. Standard V DS11 V2, right? And then, um, what I want to do next is let me hide this. Then we'll go next. Um, yeah, what we want to do is the compute name done that already. Number of no minimum number of nodes and maximum number of nodes. Okay, we're not seeing anything like that yet. Uh, okay, we keep going to the next one. Okay, are we sure we're doing the right thing? I'm not seeing nothing about nodes. Uh, okay, just give me a second, please. You know what? Let's just go on. We'll figure it out along the way. And then now we're going to create the instance. So all this is just basically building the infrastructure for the auto ML app to um sit on. Like that's basically the long and short of what we're trying to do. Okay, let's go to the next. Let's go back to the page you're coming from. Now, uh, next thing you want to do is you want to create a pipeline and add a data set. So in Azure Machine Learning Studio, expand the left by selecting the menu icon on the top right. So we're still there, right? And um, create auto ML. Is that what the access to, to select? We ask to select view the designer under offering. So I'm going to the designer page actually. Under offering. And um okay, what you want to do is select a plus to um create um a custom so back to select plus. I haven't done that. You actually then create you change the draft's name to auto pricing training. Okay, auto price training actually. So this is three minutes. Um I'm good for now. Why are we changing the name? We have to change this to this, and I will save. Okay. Now, next, the pipeline name on the left. Next to the pipeline name on the left, select the arrow icon to expand the panel. If it is not already expanded, the panel should open by default to the asset library pane, um, indicated by the books icon at the top of at the top of the panel. This is a search bar to locate assets in the pane. Two buttons, data and confidence. And um, ours is open already. Awesome. Um, next thing we want to do is then want to select components, set and place the automobile price data raw into your canvas. So um, what I want to do is now under components, we search for this the raw, and then we found it. We then come here, and then you place it here. Okay, so it's drag and drop. Right. Um, review the data output schema of the data, noting that you can see the distribution of the various column as histograms. Okay, let's see what we're talking about. Uh, oh, then sorry. Review the data output schema. Okay. 
I see the computer the things here. Hold on, sorry. Oh yeah, okay, that's awesome. So now we can actually preview the data. That's what's telling us. So we see that the data set is um it's trying to predict the car price, and um based on the cars, the width, the cars, height, the cars, length, the cars um drive wheel, but if the car is a convertible, perhaps an arch bark, if it's a sedan, um see number of features that lead up to you just the horsepower, the peak revolution per minute. I think that's what our PM means. And then we have the price of the car in one column. Okay. So now that, now that that's the let's go back to the next um part. And then um scroll to the right of the data sets until you see the right, and then we were able to see that. Now scroll to the left and then we see the normalize like and then select the statistics for this column. Note that there are a few missing missing values for predicting. So you want to execute that from training. Now scroll back to the left. Let's go back there. Um, where were we? We were under review. Preview the data and um, initially we scroll to the right and access to scroll back to the left. So now we see that some missing values in these normalized losses. And by virtue of that, why are we dealing with the, with the, with the missing values? Um, notice that there are a few missing, missing values limits the column usefulness of prediction. So you want to exclude it from the training. So you close it and um, I like to think that they will tell us how to. Remove it somewhere down the line. Yeah, they would. So now we're not taking any action yet. Just know that okay, these normalized losses, it's has some not available values, and that's usually that's almost not usually good for your model, right? Um, so now we're back to the I'm back here, right? Um, give me a minute, please. Oh, okay, okay. Now we're back here. So now you're adding data transformations. Now in the asset library, select components, which contains a wide range of modules you can use. Now select now in the asset library. Let's we're still on components. What you want to do is like we're done with the search. Also, I want to take this out. Okay, so now in the asset library, we're done with that. Next thing you want to do is um Okay, so step four, select columns in the data sets. So what I'm trying to do here is remove the columns that we do not need. Okay. Okay, select column data set and then we drag and drop. Right. Now it comes up with the um with that one, which I think makes sense. So sell search for this and then select it. Now you want to connect it. It's like a data pipeline at this point. The data outputs from the data sets we got, we connect it to this guy. Now that you've connected it to that guy, what's the next thing? Double click on it to access the setting pane and select edit column. Let's double click. And then um, we want to have the edit column. Is that what we're looking for? Hold on, sorry. Um, double click on it. Um, Select edit column, I think, was there. Then the select column, search by name and add all. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Interesting. Edit column. And then you want to search by name. And then you want to add all. Except normalize. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're removing, we recall earlier that we said that normalized losses column is such that there are some not available values there. So now we are removing those not available values. And um, I reckon that all we have to do is after all the save and yeah, so now we save it. Ta -da. And um, I think we want to close this. How do I close this? Okay, give me a minute please. This expands, this closes, interesting. All right, so now that that's done, um next thing you want to do is have the cleaning data uh, okay 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 for the many steps so let's go to the cleaning missing data module and place it under so search for the cleaning missing data clean missing data your clean missing data 
okay select another and the and connect outputs are clean okay so clean missing these here and then what you want to do here is um you connect this two now um just by connecting this you have to now I clearly the missing some ones where I was missing data. I will have to include some columns that I wanted to perform the action on. So what we do is um we double click. Um we have this with rules, column names. Um I think we have that. Let me confirm the names you have here. We have B O R E stroke ball. Ball. Okay, that's not me, sorry. Strick. And what's the last one we have? Um, Oz Power. And then now we save right. Okay, I reckon. Hold on. Still select head. Select. Oh, we're not done actually. Okay, so I think it's still selected. Okay, now it's still selected. What you want to have is the minimum value as zero, the maximum value as one, and then the cleaning mode. Um, in machine learning, there are a number of things you can do. There are a number of ways you can clean your data. You can clean your data by if you have missing values in your machine learning model. There are a number of actions you can take on it. The very first one you can replace since that's missing value. I also kill. Remove everything that has missing values. If you have, if you have so much those missing values, so that's the first thing. Second thing you can do is you can be like, um, replace the missing values with the mean of that column as another action you can take. But then in this session, um, what the action we took was um, the action we took was remove the entire row. So where is it? Remove the entire row. Every row that has a missing column, remove it. And um, now that that's done. The next thing is, I think we're done with the parts. The next thing is, you go back to the library and you search for normalized data. So the concept of normalizing the data is, um, let's say I have a range of values, and um, the value, the range of values is, oh, what am I doing? And the range of values is such that, okay, I think I'm, I picked something I wasn't supposed to pick. Okay, but let's say the range of values is between, um. Okay, that makes more sense. Let's say the range of values is between um 17 and um 107. Yeah, imagine I no between 17 and 184. Now, if I were to um normalize those values, I'll do that. I'll divide all the values by 184, the biggest value, such that when you are done with that, every value will be between zero and one, and that's easier for you to work with than dividing than working with big big numbers. So we're going to normalize um, some of our data, and um, we connect the output of cleaning missing data sets to the input of normalized data. Um, the cleaned or the cleaning? Let's confirm which one is it. The input of the the output of the clean missing data sets um, below. So let's confirm what it did earlier. So you go with the one to the left, okay, and then you call it. So we have this, and then you have it here. Right now, I want to select this and edit some parameters. The parameters they're going to select include um. Let's see what they're doing here. Okay, okay, let me compress this. Interesting. Um, normalize. So I'm going to normalize a lot of data, a lot of columns. So um, all of them. Then we pick this. Okay, so is there a way I can pick? Okay, sorry, I had something wrong. Um, so let's go one by one. I'll just copy each of them. Oops, we might spend a long, a long time here to answer. Hopefully, I copy them rightly. Okay. We have the link. Um, we have the width. We have the height. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, we have the right. We have the curb width. Okay. We have the engine size. Engine size. We have the ball. We have the stroke. We have the compression ratio. We have the, so basically these are the columns that we're trying to um, normalize. Remember I said normalizing is making your range of values such that they are no more than one and they are no less than zero, okay? And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So for the columns, yeah, we want to do all of that, okay? Okay, what have I done? And then finally we have this. Okay. It should never have this. Okay, now that we're done with that, I reckon that we have to save it. Okay, and then you run the pipeline, interesting. So then you save it. And that's saved, we can then um find and close it. Right. So now that that's done. Okay, I think what we have in ours is similar to what we have in Jazz as well. Now select configure and sorry at the top at the top to at the top of the page to open the setup pipeline dialog. Configure and submit. Interesting. And um, now we've opened the dialog box. Now on the basics page, select create new and set the number of experiments as okay. Create new. Now they ask us to name this MS Auto Training. Okay, then select next. Um, okay, sorry for that. Box. Now the display name. Inputs and outputs. On the output page, select next before making any change. Okay, so and then next. Now please. On the runtime page appears, and never and never appears because you don't have default plugin. In the select computer, select the cloud product cluster in the select compute cluster. Um, why is we working? Sorry about that. Select compute cluster. Okay. I think ours was a compute instance. And then compute instance. Yeah, it was a compute instance in our situation. We couldn't find um where we could find a compute cluster. Let's hope that doesn't affect our results. Within minutes for the one to submit, you can check the status and the job and assets from there. You can select a blah blah blah. Okay, so within a minute, we need a few minutes for the one to finish. You can check the status of the job by selecting jobs and assets. From the select training job and from here now you go to the training menu under a training select okay let's just run let's just advance okay and now okay yeah so we see that it's loading already it's preparing to submit and this will take a while so i think um at this point this would be a good point for you to or uh, perhaps ask the questions or for me i'll before you ask the question i think i'll actually take a um a drink of water or a cup of water rather a cup of water just to so you can feel the, you can view the details because it's going to take a while for it to train so uh, the, the, the summit auto training so you can go to offering then designer and select the training Hold on. Just give me a second, please. Well, it doesn't miss anything. So it says, um, what can we do with it? Next preview summit. With a few minutes, with a few minutes for it to finish. So if you want to finish, you can check the status by selecting jobs under assets. So let's check jobs under assets. 
jobs and the offsets. And it says here that it's, um, okay, I don't see the nip in yet. Let's go back. Then um, select auto price training job, auto price training job. And um, after you do that, from there, you can see when the job is completed. Once it's completed, the data is now prepared for model training. So let's see if the job is complete. Um, got it. So it's still running. So um, let's just wait. This might take a couple of minutes. Okay, but your advice to just, just take home. Um, okay. Um... Thank you so much, sir. So, so yeah, amazing. Sir. So amazing. In fact, it's another aspect of auto ML that is so interesting, seeing how to train uh, pipelines and so on. So, thank you so much. That's no problem. Also, um, I think uh, we are yeah, time already. Oh, are you serious? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me just just wrap it up. So I think I'll just go on talking about the entire process without the um without the mod without like perhaps because I think it will take like a while. From my experience, it took like a couple of minutes. It's still running. It's like a couple of minutes. So basically, um, after you're done with that, the next thing is you want to create a training pipeline. The concept of a training pipeline, all we've done now is that we've um we've run a pipeline. So um the concept of training pipeline is such that um how do I put this? Okay, you know earlier on I mentioned that you have to split the data sets into two, having your train data sets and your um validation data sets. So you have to be able to do that and you like split this and then you train your model. Having trained your model, you want to run the um, I'm really glad I shared this um, slide. And then we see here that there's a linear regression. So basically, anytime you need anything, you just go to the components. You have a drag and drop. You drop it there. If you go to the next thing, you want to do drag and drop it there. You can evaluate your model. You can create and run an inference model. You can do a whole lot of things. And let me just share a couple of the other materials I um I did. Wow, time goes by so fast when you're having fun. That's right. So this, I was so surprised when I said time. Oh, it's eight already. Interesting. So I'll share this as well. Uh, okay. And finally, so the, the the first one we just worked on now is supposed to be a regression. It is actually a regression model, so you can just look through the data, and it's very very amazing. And the last one is um, it's for clustering so i think with that i've kind of like come to the end of my session I'm almost abruptly but basically um this is me preaching the sorry about that the gospel of um visual of visual um using exploring the visual tools in for machine learning you've been able to use i mean we've not reached a line of code here and it's still machine learning because um you still need the intuition of perhaps splitting your data sets, normalizing your data sets, all that comes with knowledge of the machine learning concepts on its own, isn't it? And um, yeah, it's been amazing to have you here. At this point, if you have any questions, I think now would be a great time to raise them. And obviously, thank you so much, um, Kishore, for the amazing work you're doing within an outstanding community. Thank you so much, uh, Salim. Uh, personally, I am an admirer of your work, and it's really, really a pleasure having you to take a session with us today. Or should I say, it's a privilege to have you Thank take you. a session. Oh, no, no, no. This is all mine to be <laughs> among you guys today. Yes. Yeah, so amazing. Um, so, if for somebody that is um, curious to know, um, yeah. Say for instance, we we are done building this pipeline and so on. Yeah. Um, for the purpose of 
um, should I say, for, for the purpose of um, documentation, um, yeah. is it possible for someone to deploy these, say, on GitHub and so on, that um, the person can be able to uh, showcase it to potential employers or possibly? Uh, okay, so potential. I think the best thing, sorry I caught you. Um, short yeah, 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 go on. Um, I think the best thing is um, you could use it, have it used in like a use case. You want to like create a web app that with streamlets, call this model. I feel like what I'm saying, I feel like I'm a bit, it seems a bit too advanced, but I promise you it's nothing, it's not as advanced as it seems, okay? So you then call this model, like the auto ML model, you've, um, you've been able to create here. And then like the logic for your streamlets app or even a Flask app will then be back here. So we are going to be able to, um, show um a future a potential employee would be the um yeah. the project you created using the logic from auto ml i don't even get what i'm saying yes yes yeah so that's, I think that's yes. the best that's the best bet okay so then you can just right. you can then keep it like so if i have to write something like my resume i reckon that with most resumes these days underneath you tend to have something like um what's it called now they'll ask you um what's the actual game the actual, you have the tools so i can just be like let's say with this one i created a car price predictor and underneath the tool i have the task i have python and i have azure and i have auto ml there so yeah i did like signifying that okay, this is what i use for my um to create this um what's it called? to create this uh, machine learning application so yeah I like that question. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Salim. I think you have answered my question in the best uh, possible way, and that uh, is quite explanatory. Thank you so much. I really appreciate. And um, trust me, we do not take your time for granted. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And I don't know if any other person has another question to ask else uh, we call it a day or maybe a night <laughs> rather <laughs> well, I yeah. went to I, this um, program I really like I, it I, I want to thank the presenter as well you did a nice job and I think um, you on our whatsapp group to the case with issues regarding the the lab we can uh, we can get in contact with at any time maybe through That's text definitely. Right? Yeah, definitely. thank you once again okay. and i don't know um there's a way um the organizers can you know build a lab a microsoft lab for using our resources that will be free instead of subscribing I don't know if you can just build a lab that we can access that has the same interface like this uh, Microsoft uh, interface. Whether we can use it to practice. I don't know, maybe it's a complex of project or just a, a minor thing. Yeah, um, so mostly, um, in fact, this is something that we are going to report to uh, Microsoft because everything we are doing here, um, we'll send a report to them and then telling them that this is some of these are some of the requests that uh, participants of this particular bootcamp are facing so that uh, they can be able to come up with more solutions for us and then possibly uh, give your recommendation too. So thank you so much for that recommendation. It's Trust me, yeah. it's, very, it's very important that we have it so that I am um, emphasizing on this lab. Ah. I, I did um, I did a test, a, a test, uh, a, a wee test. They were, but before the test, they, they gave us a lab, a link to water, but it's a lab or just the built is an inbuilt lab where you can access. 
you don't you don't need to subscribe to anything. You just go there, deploy your resources. But they even set a time whereby you can test speed your 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 duration and the environment is so good. So by the time you are doing it in the real life, you'll be able to know yourself, not wasting your resources and your time and to be sincere. And I think that is the most easiest thing for for um uh, let me see here. Uh, 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 I will I put it. That is the most suggestion thing for all these um all these uh, Microsoft AWS uh, companies like that. All right. Yeah. I I think I totally understand um what you're saying and yeah definitely we we'll work with that. Thank you so much. Um Alaje, I don't know if I pronounce your name correctly. Yes, Alaje. Yeah. Oh, Alaje. All right. Thank you so much, Alaje, and thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Um, it's really, really a pleasure having each and every one of you, and we do not take your time here for granted. Trust me, we are all learning together, and it's really, really great to have Salim here. So thank you so much, Salim. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh no, thank you. Don't thank you. Right, right. So I'll make <clears throat> I'll make available all the links on the WhatsApp platform. Also, the recording for those that are not currently here, so that they can also follow up on their audio. So thank you. So much. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.